This video introduces the first concept for multivariate statistical testing. So the Mahalanobis distance isn't a test itself, but it's an important piece of the hoteling t-squared test, which we'll cover in the next video. And it turns out that this video will also cover concepts that will be part of something called principal components analysis, an ordination method, and we're going to talk about that later in the class as well. So there's a lot of useful concepts in here for that subject too. So far in this class, you've basically been using tests with measurements of just one variable. For example, you're comparing the size of sand grains, you have the one measurement of the maximum dimension, or something like that. But what if you have measurements of more than one thing, like measurements of pH and oxygen and chlorophyll from two different lakes? So the lakes are your samples, but you have more than one variable because you measure different things in the lakes, and you want to compare all these variables at the same time. So in this situation, we have more than one variable. This is also called multivariate data. So measuring distance in univariate or one-dimensional space is pretty straightforward. You know, in many tests, like the t-test, or in, in a number of tests, we want to know how far points are from the mean. And so it's just measuring the distance. We'll just take the value of the point minus the value of the mean. And so this is called Euclidean distance. Euclidean distance also applies in multivariate space. I mean, you may have calculated distance between two points on a graph in this matter. Um, and we can even extend it to an arbitrary number of dimensions in multivariate space with this formula here. So if we want to know the Euclidean distance between a point and the multivariate mean, which is the cross in the graph here, we could easily calculate that with this formula. However, there are some limitations that Euclidean distance has when the variables have covariance, as is illustrated here and is relatively common in a lot of real data sets. So, for example, the red point and the blue point both have the same Euclidean distance from the mean. Again, the mean is the cross in the middle of the data. Uh, however, intuitively, you'd probably think that the red square is sort of a more extreme distance from the mean because it doesn't fall within the cloud of points. The blue one is, you know, towards the edge, but still kind of in the middle of the points. And so I'll also point out one more thing from this graph here. So multivariate space doesn't have to have only two axes. We don't have to have only two variables, although all the examples that I'll illustrate have two because it's simpler that way. Um, but because we can have more than two, I'll refer to the variables as x1, x2, x3, so forth, rather than x and y, like you traditionally label axes on a graph. Okay, so I mentioned covariance. Um, we talked about it before, but just as a brief recap, it's just a measure of how much two variables change together. So as one increases, does the other also increase? But when we're talking about multivariate data, we instead need to talk about something called the variance-covariance matrix. So the variance-covariance matrix is a square matrix, which means it has the same number of rows and columns. This one is three by three and it contains the covariances between all pairs of variables. So x1 is one variable, it's the measurements of oxygen, x2 is the measurements of pH, x3 is chlorophyll, for example. Um, and so we have the covariance of x1 with itself, the covariance between x1 and x2, the second variable, and so forth. The covariance of a variable with itself is just the variance, and so in this case, the diagonals of this matrix contain the variances of each variable, and that's where we get the name variance-covariance matrix. I also point out the matrix is symmetrical uh, in addition to being square because the covariance of x1 with x2 is the same thing as the covariance of x2 with x1. Okay, so getting back to the problem with Euclidean distance, uh, it would be a lot more robust if we could just rescale this plot somehow so that the two variables didn't have any covariance anymore. And so that's basically what the Mahalanobis distance does. But first, before we can talk about how it does that, we need to take a little diversion to discuss how exactly we can rescale variables. Okay, so the first important sort of underlying point is that we can describe directions in coordinate space as vectors. So the arrow here illustrates the vector 2, 1, because it extends from the origin, 0, 0, to the coordinates 2 on the first axis and 1 on the second axis. 
if we had more than two axes, we could have a vector with three numbers or four numbers or five numbers, which illustrates sort of its direction in that multidimensional space. So just, you know, this, we'll come back to this again, but remember that, you know, we can describe a direction on a graph as a vector. So the next kind of building block is something called an eigenvector. Um, so basically square matrices, and we'll talk about an n-dimensional matrix. So here's a two by two matrix. We had a three by three matrix before. So square n-dimensional matrices have n eigenvectors. So this two-dimensional matrix here will have two eigenvectors. And an eigenvector is defined, so it's a vector that when multiplied by a matrix yields a result that just is the eigenvector itself multiplied by some integer, which we'll call i. So basically, if we multiply this matrix here, the 2, 2, 3, 1 matrix, by our eigenvector, which I just labeled E1 and E2, that's a vector, the result of that will be the same thing as E1, E2, the vector itself, times some integer whole number. So you might be wondering how this relates, but remember from the previous slide that we can describe directions in space, like in a graph, as vectors, and so the eigenvector will end up being an important direction on our graph. Okay, so I won't get into how the eigenvector is actually calculated, but it turns out that one of the eigenvectors of this example matrix here is 3 and 2. So I'll demonstrate why this is an eigenvector. So if we multiply the matrix by its eigenvector, and it shows how you do that there, you get the vector 12, 8. And that's the same thing as three, the vector 3, 2 times 4. Right? So basically this is how the eigenvector fulfills this definition. You multiply the matrix by the eigenvector and you get 12, 8. You multiply the eigenvector by 4, you also get 12, 8, so the same thing. One quick note, eigenvectors are typically scaled so that they have a length of 1. Um, and so the eigenvector 3, 2 in our graph here, um, actually the, the length of that is the square root of 13. And so the scaled eigenvector is 3 over root 13 and 2 over root 13. Um, this is a minor point, um, but it will explain later on why the eigenvalues, which we'll talk about in a second, are not integers. Okay, so back to our first example here. We can calculate the, the scaled eigenvectors of this example data set, and, and they're given here. And remember that they can be used as directions on a plot. Um, and so the arrow on the graph on the right shows the first eigenvector. And so now we can see how the eigenvector becomes really useful. And here it is. The line defined by this first eigenvector is the direction of greatest variability in the data set. So the line, the dark red line here, is that first eigenvector. It's the direction of that first eigenvector. So it turns out this is also a type of regression called major axis regression, and it's essentially the foundation of a technique called principal components analysis, which we'll discuss in a few weeks. Okay, so the, the eigenvector tells us important things about the variability in the data. We need one more, one more piece of information to be able to rescale this graph and remove covariance. And so remember that the definition of the eigenvector had this integer i, that basically the eigenvector is multiplied by i, and you get the same thing as the eigenvector multiplied by the matrix. And so that integer i is something called the eigenvalue, and it's given the Greek letter lambda. So we have the eigenvector and the eigenvalue. Um, it can be a little confusing sometimes. Um, in the case of the example that I, I demonstrated before, the eigenvalue of this vector is 4, um, but most of the ones you'll see are not going to be integers because we've scaled the eigenvectors to have length of 1 as opposed to their original length. Okay, so going back to our graph here, I showed the first eigenvector before and, and now I'm showing the second eigenvector as the blue line. Um, each of those has an eigenvalue and what, you'll, what you may note is that the first eigenvalue, lambda 1, is, is much bigger it's 11.776, which is much bigger than the second one, which is only 1.557. And you probably also notice that the data are spread out a lot more along the dark red line for the first eigenvector, and they're not spread out very much along the blue line for the second eigenvector. So that's important, 
and this is how we can use the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues to remove the covariance. So basically, we can the technique will treat each eigenvector as a new axis. So instead of having x1 and x2, we'll just sort of rotate this graph so that we have the two eigenvectors as the new axes. Um, and then we can shrink the data along each one by the square root of the eigenvalue. So we're going to shrink them along the red axis quite a lot because the eigenvalue is big. And we're going to shrink it on the, on the blue axis only a little bit. And so what this basically does is it removes the covariance. And by removing the covariance, we can now essentially use Euclidean distance between the rescaled points to get our actual multivariate distance measure. Okay, so it's kind of a bit of a diversion. These points will be useful later on for principal components analysis too. But basically what I described is a multivariate distance measure called the Mahalanobis distance. It basically uses the matrix of distances as well as the variance covariance matrix to perform this procedure and calculate the distance between the points. So this slide has more information. There's an R function for Mahalanobis distance, so we don't really need to worry about a lot of the calculations here. But essentially, the Mahalanobis distance forms the basis of the hoteling T squared test, the multivariate version of the T test, um, and that will be covered in the next video.